everybody it's Catherine and it's uh, Tuesday sewing and as promised we're going to do some slow stitching today so uh, yeah grab up a chair nice cup of tea get a few bits and bobs around you now um, <clears throat> I've collected a few things that I would normally have a rummage through if I'm thinking of doing unless I've got a particular project in mind uh, but I've sort of got bits and bobs of uh, I like to keep my bases pretty neutral I think you can always add colour uh, on top of it but I like to have pretty neutral bases so I have like two bags of uh, whites and you know beiges, creams, that sort of thing bits of uh, grungy lace etc so I've got those two I've got my needles, pins I've got my Peter Rabbit got my Peter Rabbit box with some lace in I've got my two trusty cones of linen and um, I've got an assortment of threads today because I want as I said I want to do something autumnal colours to really go uh, inside this other autumn journal that I've just started uh, so I've got some green perle I've got some mixed yellow orange perle there uh, that's a thicker perle you can see the markings on it so that's much thicker same with that uh, and then I've got some linen in like a goldy yellow colour and then I've sort of got bits and bobs of uh, uh, fabrics that I perhaps thought I would use today I also have a, a bag with fibres in and I have to say some of these are 15 years old um, used to get them from Texaray Yarns but as far as I can see they don't sell stuff anymore which is a shame because you used to buy these variegation packs of different colours um, you know that was the yellow one and they were great um, I used to make you know tassels and things for projects with them but they're great for tags and stuff like that and same with a collection of different yarns so we might use that today um, but I've got them out anyway and um, thought I'd just show you a few ideas now if you enjoy doing you know if you're going to enjoy doing this uh, this slow stitch um, session then I thought perhaps that over the coming weeks we could do a little series making up small pieces that we can join together to make a, a journal cover um, let me know if that's something you fancy doing because I think that would be nice small manageable squares or rectangles or whatever and uh, try and use a common uh, colour theme throughout and then we could make a journal cover with it and uh, I think that would be quite enjoyable so this is just a little piece that I did just to give you a bit of an idea how you know your squares could be made up and there's nothing too um, too difficult about this really um, basically it's just some really thick uh, like a canvas uh, material is the base <coughs> excuse me let me get a cup of tea I've got a, got a frog in my throat yeah <coughs> oh that's nice nice cup of tea Oh, it's making me cough now three different laces I've put some lace on the top there in the middle and a different one down here and then a slow stitch all along I've just found some different buttons in my stash and I do like if I'm using buttons from a, an embroidery and a decorative point of view I do like to put different colour threads through the buttons I just think they you know white buttons with some different colored threads I think look really effective so that's an idea of something we could do this is just to show you that you know we don't have to stop with circles uh, we don't have to stop with circles we don't have to stop with squares we could do whatever shapes we want and this is um, and look out for some little sayings or scraps of ends of material on the salvage of this one it says you must do the things you think you cannot and I liked that so I sort of put that on there this one 
got some uh, wadding background so that it could be quilted if you would give you more of a quilted effect. It's got a bit of paper on there and just got different, I like the different textures so we've got some different cottons then we've got some um, fabric here that you would, upholstery fabric and then this is a, a bit of a scrappy end, edge to some other upholstery fabric. This piece I've backed onto card so it shows that you could actually um, you could use them as toppers if you want um, you know like for example I've done here that's me this one that we're, we're, but you know you could do something as a topper on it if you wanted and I've done a bit of um, this is just some uh, cheesecloth and it's quite easy to pull pull the strands of the cheesecloth to give you like some texture um, this is to show that we can easily make a little journal a little book to go inside uh, a bigger journal that we're doing and uh, this was really just to uh, this is to show couching which is like couching different fabrics and uh, different threads on this is like a, a thick twine and uh, again this is different string this is wool so just to give you different ideas that uh, you can still incorporate and then I've not finished this yet but I've got some bits and bobs left from the journal I was making with some papers from Rachel so um, you know how lovely does this uh, make a little a little book even a little uh, rack to give to a friend or whatever. This is to show, let me take my tea away or else I'm going to spilling it on me. This really, I wanted to show how we can put things as pages. Let's get some plain. Say for example, we've got a page in a journal here. This see that could say fit there you could hinge it on so you'd cover the back you could even cover it with some um, writing paper and use a board behind it so write on it or just put normal fabric so you, you could hinge that on there and actually this I've incorporated a pocket in there so let's get a tag let me reach over reach over it's probably one that's not going to fit in oh no How lovely does that look? And it's quite simple, you know, you're just using some leftovers of material, bit of slow stitch, bit of different edging, some burlap as a pocket, and uh, yeah, I just think that's, you know, there's endless possibilities really. And then again here, this could be a page as well. Just hinge it on. You may even decide you're going to do a, a journal that's all featuring slow stitch pages stay um, so this one is we've got some leftover sari silk cheesecloth again which I've gathered to give a ribbed effect um, just bits of old uh, tea dyed coffee dyed material Suffolk puffs or yo-yos that you call them some places um, <clears throat> bit of lace and uh, yeah I think it's a pride and I think really that no two pieces it ends up the same and um, it's a way of like expressing yourself it's nice just to sit down and just do a bit of slow stitching and not think about it or you can then make it a little bit more elaborate uh, to go in projects but you don't need to have the elaborate um, what I'd like to do today is so we've got yours ready. I've, oh, these were two other things. So if you remember these from when we did the, the backgrounds from the um, using Bonder Web and the scraps, scraps of fabric and uh, threads. Um, and I've started to highlight this. Well, you could also do some slow stitching on that. So you could do a bit of both, a bit of machine stitching, a bit of slow hand embroidery on there, hand stitching. Um, so from there I mean slow stitch 
yeah it's nowadays it's more thought to be uh, a means of meditation a means of relaxation um but in like other cultures uh like for example in india we have they call it cantha stitch and they do the most amazing hand quilts and they just use the straight stitch uh, and it was a means of of making quilts in traditional ways and quilting it holding the layers of fabrics together by just doing rows and rows of different colored straight stitches and uh, yeah that you can look on ebay and there's there's loads of um, like vintage camphor uh, blankets and things going on there which you could use and then add further to so today i wanted to do a few little uh pieces scrappy pieces to go in this this journal now this one has got a totally different feel i want it to have a different feel to the one that i've already nearly finished the one using artemis kit so this is using uh, a bit of that but mainly the papers and uh, from tina at shabby dabby do da i always forget to put the dar on the end shabby dabby do da now i want to really this is quite grungy in places um so i've just started putting things but i wanted to um got some scrappy tags i wanted to make a few extra tags out of stitch out of doing slow stitch and um also some little snippets of slow stitch to go to go on some pages now that's a really grungy lovely grungy page let's let's choose say for example this one because it's quite plain we need a bit of something else on there so <clears throat> i thought i'd first of all do, i've started cutting up this do you remember this this went a bit wrong last week with the melted bubble wrap and um the sari silk but you know nothing's wasted so what i thought was that i <clears throat> so how are you all doing hope you're all keeping well and uh, it's quite a grey grey day today here in the UK well here in the northeast where we are um, <clears throat> it's it's been quite fair weather really it's not been uh, too bad um, <clears throat> I know various places down south have had a lot of rain um, I know uh, my sister lives in North London and she said there was a lot of local flooding down there uh, and um, storms and things which we we sort of must have been on the just on the edge and just missed it um, so yeah all the leaves are starting to turn now which I think is lovely and uh, when I take Nelson out, I'm sort of on the lookout for any lovely coloured leaves. So don't forget, we need our leaves for Thursday. Um, <clears throat> something else for our autumn journal. Now, actually, surprisingly, this bubble wrap is lovely to sew through. It's really nice. Um, I think it makes a nice texture. Um, for the edgings of you so uh, nothing much exciting has happened really here uh, I've been doing a bit of uh, reading because as you know I've got Jane Catherine on books and uh, if you're not aware of it go on out check it out thank you I've got I'm about 40 40 off a thousand subscribers over there and uh, yeah so that's my other passion I really love reading um, but I felt more like doing stitching and things during the pandemic I've not read quite as much as normally I mean normally I can read seven to ten books in a month I'm quite a fast reader but uh, no I've probably only been picking up about three or four which is unknown for me really so if you want you can you know you can uh, do several stitches at once but I think if we're just relaxing and doing a bit of slow stitching I just like to you know just sit there and do them all individually 
and I think we don't have enough time for ourselves do we you know and especially if we you know working mothers I mean not not you know there may be some uh, male crafters watching this uh, but generally speaking that you know we're so busy with work the house children um, you know I've been there now and uh, it feels strange actually not having the children at home to me I think it must be a maternal thing I find it difficult to be honest um, you know they've been left home quite a while but um, yeah and, and and as I said before none of them live uh, close to us here so uh, I do find it I mean you bring them up to be independent and I was really proud to do that to bring them up independent because I felt that I didn't have as much independence as I would have liked and um, so I always wanted you know my boys to really be independent and go out and seek the dreams and uh, you know and, and go after life's adventures really and uh, that's all well and good but then they're off doing those adventures and you don't you know you don't see them as much as you'd like to um, which is fine you know I brought them up to you know to be independent and do lots of stuff um, but I miss them I really miss having having them at home and uh, so there's just me and David and Nelson now um you know which is which is great you know it's a nice nice little family of three <laughs> down to three from all the uh, one time we'd got to have my eldest son adam is uh 28 my youngest son joe the one that's just passed his test that you know about he is 24 is he 24? 23. Let's think about that then. <clears throat> and then I have two stepsons. So my eldest stepson is 31. And he's the one that lives in Oxford. We've got two grandchildren. He's got two little babies. Well, Lily Rose, she's uh, five. And the baby, Freddie, he's just one and uh, and then my youngest stepson Owen he's oh no I have to think because he's I think he's 26 yes I think so because it was always there was uh, Jason so he's 31 then we have Adam who's 28 then we have Owen who's 26 and then Joe that's 23 uh, yeah and at one time um, all four boys live with us and uh, yeah when you've got four strapping lads that are six foot you know <laughs> they used to eat us out of house and home you can uh, you can imagine can't you <laughs> um, so yeah they're all doing well and uh, apart from seeing Joe when he came up when he passed his test um, we haven't seen we haven't seen the others since February so it's it's tough it's tough for everybody isn't it I'm sure a lot of you were in similar circumstances and it is it is quite tough but best to you know best this way and uh, yeah I quite like that so we'll have that on there best this way than people putting themselves in harm's way really so uh, um, it's it's testing testing your resilience I think um, yeah very testing right I'm going to do another one of those I'll just use up this bit of thread and I like that effect because that will be quite see-through um, going over the edge of a page. Let me snip that off a bit. Oh look, we've got. I think we've missed Nelson last couple of videos. I'm not sure he was barking last time. 
he's got worse since we've had the, the pandemic and the lockdown obviously we've spent a lot more time at home um and even though we, we've both we've both retired now we've retired early because um david has ill health he does have a, a long-standing chronic problem a uh, heart problem which is uh, quite rare and uh, he had to give up work really due to ill health and then I decided that I would take early retirement from nursing to spend more time with him really there's no point is there and you know I think it's times like these when you realize that health is very important and um, spending time having time to see your family and uh, what have you is important so yeah I took early retirement only to find out that because my NHS pension was frozen because I did do work um, I left the health service and worked in occupational health for uh, I went around the country doing uh, occupational health and advising the medicals for big companies because my pension was frozen, um, I couldn't get it till I was 60. Well, I'm, I am 60 now. Well, I'm pretending I'm not 60 because my, I had to cancel all my birthday bash because it was the 2nd of April, my birthday. And of course, we just started lockdown in the UK. And uh, uh, yeah, so I've put it on hold. So um, I'm not 60 yet. But anyway, so so really, I sort of retired early three years ago, and uh, um, NHS pensions you can access at fifty five now. Well, I couldn't because apparently there's some clause there that said that uh, you know if uh, you've got a frozen pension, which I have, it was frozen, you know, the day I left the health service. Um, can't get it till you're 60 so obviously I can get it now but unfortunately they've lost quite a few years quite a few years off it so um, I'm not I'm not accessing it yet because I want them to do an investigation there's no point in accessing it and then half of the money's missing is there so right we've got two lovely edgings there so these are two pockets that I've uh, just machine stitched round to go I thought the you know it's the same material as what I've got here for my uh, journal so I'm going to do them on the inside pocket so I thought I'd do a bit of stitch on there what do we fancy oh I think we'll have shall we have a bit of this pearly gold on there no we'll have some mixed some of these I've had for a long long time um a lot of my stash really is over the years of uh, well, they're my material scissors. Um, collecting things over years and years. It's only it's about three years since I started junk journaling, and um, the reason how I came across junk journaling was um, after my mum passed away. Um, I wanted to do. Um, some little journals uh, for my two boys and my sister to incorporate some of the things my mum loved scarves she was always very smartly dressed my mum she was always really smart and um, and she had some beautiful scarves and um, so I thought it'd be nice to incorporate um, mine I've got some and um, they're in a box in the loft that uh, I started putting together a journal and then I just couldn't face doing it really so I left it for a bit so I'll be all right to pick it up again now um, it's two years ago first of March since we lost my mum and um, yeah so I wanted to do some little memory journals really for them and put in some of the scarves and materials and bits and bobs of my mum's and some old photos of like my boys when they were younger with the nan 
and my sister and I and uh, so that's how I started I started doing a bit of research into it and I came across Gail Agostinelli and if you're new to junk journaling Gail is a font of all knowledge junk journaling um, she's a lovely lady in America if you don't already know her uh, she's got a massive channel now I mean she got about eight well probably about 7,000 subscribers when I first started watching her um, three years ago and oh, she's got 20 odd thousand now um, and she, you know I learnt so much from watching Gail so much of the basics how to put journals together and um, so I did those journals uh, the memory books for the first Christmas for the boys and my sister and uh, that was it then after that I found Rachel from uh, Roxy Creations and then I found Tracy Fox Love Junk Journals Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah and um, and so on and so on and uh, I'm hooked now because I just think it's something that you could for me anyway I can I can put everything in it you know all things that I love so I love stitching I love textiles you know like you know I did that course on embroidery hand and machine embroidery um, I love making books I love writing um, so all those things really junk journaling it's the spot it's it's perfect I, I really love it glad to have found it so um, and I know there's one or two uh, of you that are new to it new to junk journaling as well um, there's so many great channels now I mean Melanie Sullivan's a good one to watch if you really like the stitching she does loads of um, she does loads of different projects but very similar to, to my style I think in lots of ways but she does a lot of art stuff she is trained in um, I think she went to university to do fashion or, or something like that and uh, you know she if you see her if you're ever feeling down if you're ever feeling down go and look at Melanie Sullivan's craft room that's what I do I said to her once in a comment because uh, I said you know if I'm feeling fed up I come and have a look at watch your craft room tour again it's amazing she's got a beautiful craft room and all sorts of bits and bobs in it and material and quilts and stuff that you know just my sort of thing and um, but she's also got an art room as well sorry I'm gonna have a slurp of my tea now So she's, um, that's a wonderful art, uh, craft room to watch. I mean, you may think I've got a massive craft. I haven't. I think this little bedroom's about nine by ten, something like that. I've got a full wall behind us there, a floor to ceiling in uh, cube bookshelves. Not as many books on there now. I think a lot of my books are embroidery and craft books and things. And then craft supplies uh, so I don't think I've done bad slotting as much stuff in as I have um, that's one pocket done and then over to my right I've just got a little desk there with my big machine on and it's just got some four little uh, cubes there for pull out craft stuff and then behind me here is the desk uh, David's desk and the computer the, the and then at the side of that we've got a freezer <laughs> now then I wonder how many other people have got a freezer in their spare bedroom um, the kitchen the kitchen doesn't have space for an upright fridge freezer because the fridge is integral integral in, integral integral I can't think how to say that um, uh, yeah so that's fitted in under the worktops and there's just no it's quite a small kitchen and there's no space in there to put an upright fridge freezer or a freezer uh, or a dishwasher my dishwasher David 
And uh, so, yeah, we have to have the freezer in the bedroom. At one time, I mean, when... Um, first off, when we, we've lived here nearly 11 years, and when we first moved here, Adam came back from uni and, and came back here for six months and had this room. And then he went off and got a job and went off. And then after Joe came back from uni, he came back and had this as his room for six months. Must be six months that they stop and then they go on. Um, so we had to have this blinking freezer in our bedroom. And oh, it's noisy. It doesn't sound at the minute, but it used to be you could hear it at night time. Free, you know, whatever freezers make that funny noise, don't they? When they're freezing drive me crazy it did well I got used to it but David were more bothered by it than me but anyway now so I suppose that's that's a good side isn't it I've only been David myself and Nelson um the freezer can come in the spare room and plus like now it's you know the bed's gone and everything and it's just a craft space craft office space uh now this this opens out fully it's twice the size of this but it's extra high David bought me this one Christmas and it's got markings you can't see on this side but over on this side it's got a tape measure so it's got markings all along it and it opens up double if there was space um, and really it's for dressmaking so you can cut out long fabrics and things but um, it's great um, and it's good for standing height because it's extra tall. So it's not table height. It's uh, really standing height for cutting material out. Um, so it's been a great addition. Really, it can be used. I suppose it doubles up as a dining table, really. Because we've got some tall stools, although they're not very comfy. Um, yeah. So I hope you're all okay sat over there sewing. I don't know where we are for time. I'm rabbiting on and we could be. How are we for time, David? Okay, so that's another one finished. Just finish it off with a knot. So let me know if you like the idea of us doing uh, like a small panel every week, slow stitching, just sit on Catherine's comfy sofa and uh, we'll have an atta. Can't promise cake every week. Um, right, I just want to show you, right, let's do this. So I just wanted to show you how you can do uh, slow stitch as well as on other types of fabrics and layers. So that needs a bit more machine stitching. As you can see, it's like a poppy head. And uh, I just want that to be more highlighted, really. So, you know, you could do it with, with this bit tougher always make sure you've got a good embroidery needles a good sharp needles um, we know about that because I've had them through my finger a few times uh, but um, I've recently found sashiko needles from Japan which have been specially milled for the strength um, because I find sometimes cheap needles they get bendy and you have to throw them out um, and I've been really pleased with these. They really are strong. And they've got a really fine, sharp point. Um, I've got an extra long one as well if you just want to just be, you know, weaving your stitches, really. Um, but that's a bit cumbersome, really. It's quite long and, you, you know, it's okay for just doing lines and lines of straight, straight like canther stitch. Uh, but I just wanted you to see that you don't have to stick to any one fabric, you know, it's, uh, and you don't have to stick to any one genre really, you can do a bit of mixed media, um, you can even, you know, I've even stitched, stitched, done stitch on the top of, uh, um, when I've done some stenciling with the, uh, you know the paste um, you can even stitch through that and get some really good effects so um, just basically 
just can run some stitches around there or we could go down there so it does work quite nicely on that so that's that material we've done it on plastic we've done our two pockets we've done a couple of edgings um, right quickly I just want to show you couch stitch because I think it's a very useful and you probably already know it you know you probably already have done some elements of couch stitch before right I'm going to do it with this no I think we'll have white linen it's lovely this linen but it's very thin and sometimes it it, it splits um, I'm just going to do couching and then I think I'll have to call it a day because I've been nattering on I don't know if YouTube allow me to natter on for so long okay so couching is just like I showed you that you could let me find my little book where's my little book yeah yeah so it's using other things that you wouldn't normally I mean you can't thread that through a needle um, so I, I want to make like an edging on the edge there of um, a tab that we're going to have in the book I don't know, I shouldn't be using my embroidery scissors really should I for that okay so what we're going to do is come in from the back I'll cut that down in a bit and you just hold now what I tend to do is I like to have a little holding stitch I mean the idea is that you know you can couch it and you could pull the middle out if you want but I don't see the point in that if you're couching something that's you want to be permanent you don't want it to pull out do you really so this is just a scrap of old um, edging to some um, I think actually this was cheesecloth but I do a little holding stitch first um, so that it doesn't it doesn't escape and basically you just go from one side to the other and then back up at the same side and down so I'm sure you all know it back up at the same side and down the other now it depends how you want this could be quite decorative um, trying to think if there's anything that I've no nothing special about those um, you can see as we go around in circles you know it's up to you where you put your stitches so that you've got a, a different effect you can alter the the, the uh, type of type of thread that you use the the color the thickness of the strands you could put if you're using something like dmc you can put different um, numbers of threads because they usually go up to six don't they so you could put different numbers of strands of threads in to get different effect this is just quite basic um, but i thought that i'd just show you this because I think if we are going to do our lovely panels to make a journal um, this is a really good one to have we could do this uh, and it'd be great to see great to see what you've done so you can always leave examples and tag me in on Instagram so I am Catherine so C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E -E, underscore and pink it my surname's pink it so it's p i n k e double -T, t like jada pink it who married to will smith uh yeah tag me in on those and let me see what you've been doing your projects what you've been up to since uh, we've been spending time together uh and also moving forward if we do these um you know these panels for a journal it'd be great to see if we all set off with like this week we'll probably say right we'll do 
we're going to just do slow, plain slow straight stitch another week we'll say right we'll do cross stitch and it'd be lovely to see what comes up and the other idea I thought was that I could like have a bit of a a draw I, I forgot what it's like like a tombola I'll, I'll write different colors and different material names in a, in a in a tub in a box and then we'll pull a few out so that we know what we're going to so for example I pull one out and it said right burlap this week two materials say you've got to use burlap and you've got to use cotton and then we could pull one out that says right cross stitch you know that sort of thing so that we're testing ourselves as well so that we, we're sort of learning new stitches learning new skills that we can use in our junk journaling any journaling really um, and also colours out of our comfort zone um, which I notice that um, Anne Brooke if you've been like some of you have been doing the Sew for the Soul um, she's joined up with six she's been asked to join uh, six other tubers youtubers um, and the, I think they're calling it hashtag collaboration seven um, and they're like giving each other challenges and colours uh, in there so uh, yeah that sounds fun so we need to you know watch them and we might get some ideas and uh, to put into our own work so there we go that is now couched let's find a page so we're going to put it on totally different this kit to the one from the other journal but it's really pretty right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sew that on there or glue it how lovely does that look on the page so we don't want to see any of the backing stitch so you'll just see that at that at that side and uh, yeah I really like that that's just giving it a bit of something bit of texture with the bubble wrap and uh, I think that's uh, nice so that's what we've what I managed to get done today so don't be afraid to try different fabrics and different threads different floss so I've got I've made three edgings um, we've done a little bit on that piece and uh, done my pockets so we'll call it a day I think because I've been gassing on forever let me know how you're getting on and uh, yeah Thursday come with your leaves they can be real or cut out a cardboard card whatever so I'll see you Thursday bye for now